When THX mentioned they've got a brand new product, I was intrigued to see what it is. And to my surprise, it actually ended up being a DAC. They're very much first product that I've actually produced. In other words, it's not THX certified, it's actually a THX product in its own right. Now this DAC isn't cheap, it costs around £200 in the UK and around $200 in the US. If you're interested in purchasing it, check it out in the links in the description below and also down there you'll find some alternatives that you might want to consider including some of the DACs that I'll be mentioning throughout this review. Now before proceeding with this review, do follow me on Instagram or Twitter if you use those social media platforms and it goes without saying that if you do subscribe and hit that bell notification you can keep up with the channel itself. And furthermore, if you're interested in keeping up with the latest news or reviews on all electric or hybrid vehicles, you should definitely check out Totally EV. I'm effectively doing a new car review every single week. So to kick things off, let's talk about the build quality and design. And here, the THX Onyx has got a very slender design. This is because it is a portable DAC. It's actually one of the most portable DACs I've ever come across and very much similar to some of the USB DACs that you find out there on the market. What I also like is that it's got a magnetic kind of mechanism which means that it can kind of clasp and therefore take a little less space in your pocket or indeed on your desk. It is terminated via a USB Type-C connector although in the box you will find a Type-C to Type-A adapter if for example like me you're using more of a legacy device or indeed if you want to just connect over Type-A rather than using Type-C. Now in terms of input or should we say output it's got a singular 3.5 millimeter jack. This will support headsets in other words a four pole connector directly plugged into it and we'll talk about recording quality very shortly. Now in terms of its internals, this is one of THX's very first mobile devices that's using the AAA78 certification, in other words giving it ultra low distortion and noise, at least according to THX. And furthermore, it also supports MQA. For those people who are not aware of it, this is something that's going to be very useful for those people who listen to Tidal. Now here, if you're playing higher quality audio, what you'll find is there's three little LEDs found on the THX Onyx, and these determine what the sample rate is. So blue stands for 44.1 to 48 kilohertz PCM, yellow 48 kilohertz PCM, DSD goes to red and magenta goes to MQA. So in this respect you can flip through the different modes on Tidal, for example if you've got the desktop app or indeed if you've got it on a mobile device and you can see the colors adjusting accordingly depending on what the source input is. Now in terms of compatibility the THX Onyx will work on a Windows 10 device Android, iOS, and also Mac OS. Worth bearing in mind over here that if you're gonna use it on an iOS device, you will need a type A or type C to lightning connector because well, you know, Apple use their own proprietary connectors, of course. Now elsewhere, there's no official statement on it running on any console, so be it on, let's say, PlayStation 5 or Xbox One. However, I can't see why it would be a problem if you have a type C or type A output and therefore can run it on your console. Now to round off this section, in terms of practicality, the THX Onyx does not operate or doesn't even pick up as a source device at least on Windows or on Android if you don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack connected into its well output or input. In this respect this is done in order to save energy. I did however find it a little bit frustrating so for example if you're on Tidal and you were to unplug your headphones then you'll have to restart Tidal in order for it to pick up let's say the masters or MQA support correctly because well the THX Onyx has been disconnected and therefore no longer exists as a system output which can be a little bit cumbersome specifically if you have different headphones that you like using. And there's also another thing that I just remembered and that's the fact that the THX Onyx does get a little bit toasty after it's been used for around an hour or so. So it's Sabre DAC that's found inside does get a little bit hot and therefore, well, it's not gonna be needing to cool down, but just something you should be mindful about in terms of let's say if you have it placed in your pocket, you might realize after a little while that it gets a little bit hot. So now we get on to recording capabilities and this is going to be quite a complex one because I had a lot of back and forth with THX and they actually ended up sending me the Razer Black Shark V2X as well in order for me to do my recording tests. Now you might be wondering, well, don't you have your own setup? Yes, I do. I have my MUT headphones and I've got a mod mic. That connects via a separate headphone and a separate microphone input jack, whereas the Black Shark has the ability to do both, not only in terms of splitting in terms of headphone and microphone input, 
but also in terms of having a four pole connector on one of its prongs, if that makes sense, without its extender, and therefore can directly plug into the THX Onyx. Now, why did I want to do this? Well, purely because I wanted to see in terms of the overall sensitivity and the gain that the THX Onyx was able to achieve. And what I found was pretty shocking results when it came to the THX Onyx ability of catch capturing my voice and uh, playing it back at a relatively normalized volume. So to give you that demo, we're going to switch over to the THX Onyx, which is going to be directly plugged in via USB or USB Type A to Type C adapter that it comes with, connected directly into my computer, and at this end it will go directly into the Razer headphones. Now, I will stress, I have not touched the gain volume in the different recordings between my motherboard and the THX Onyx. So in case it's going to be really low, that's not my problem. It's just because I'm giving you a like-for-like -like comparison. So right now, everything you can hear is coming directly from the THX Onyx. Again, that's connected over USB with the headset directly connected via its four-pole connector and therefore not using the extender cable that comes in the box with with the Razer headset. Now you might be immediately thinking that might be an issue with your own computer or the way that your computer is handling the gain. Well right now I have connected it up to my Microsoft Surface Go. You can see it's directly connected in. In other words the headset's directly connected into the jack and everything you can hear right now is coming directly from the onboard audio of the Microsoft Surface Go. And now yet again we're going to switch to the THX Onyx and you'll be able to hear the difference for yourself. And so now everything you can hear is coming directly from the THX Onyx. It's connected via USB Type-C straight to my Surface Go and therefore the um, headset is connected directly via the THX Onyx. Now just for comparison's sake, here is my ModMic 4.0 connected directly at the back of my motherboard, except this time it's using a USB sound card, a cheap USB sound card, in order to better the overall recording capabilities. And now we're going to switch over to the THX Onyx, which is going to be connected via Type-C to Type-A connector to my PC, and at the other end, because my mod mic wouldn't work directly into the THX Onyx, because it needs a four pole connector, it'll be connected over via a Sennheiser splitter, which has the headphone and microphone inputs. And in this respect, I'll be plugging in my mod mic to the microphone input and giving you a comparison. Yet again, a warning, it's going to be a lot lower in terms of volume. So right now what you can hear is the mod mic that's connected over the Sennheiser splitter and then connected to the THX Onyx that's connected over USB. Now ultimately what I'm trying to convey over here is that the THX Onyx, at least for my setup, in using two different microphones and a multitude of different source devices just didn't have the same sort of gain volume that I expected. Is this going to be a problem? Potentially. If you're a gamer, then you, what you might find is that even if your gain volume is on 100% like it was on mine, then your other side, in other words, your teammates, for example, in-game might not be able to hear you properly and there's, well, pretty much nothing you can do in order to counter that unless you get, let's say, a third-party app and potentially artificially boost in microphone input via the THX Onyx, which again might be a little bit complicated. And now we get on to sound quality, and here I was able to put it through its paces against some of its competitors from different price points, and I was also able to use Tidal Masters to the likes of MP3 playback, which I often use, and in this respect was able to kind of do A-B testing. Now the DACs that I used were from iFi, so there's the iFi Zen DAC, there's the iFi XDSD, there was the Audio Engine D1, and the Cord you go to, and of course the THX Onyx. This gave it an interesting kind of playing field from portable to non portable DACs, and of course, ones which are far superior in terms of overall audio quality and also in terms of the overall price point they come in at. Now, before getting onto my subjective opinion, I should point out that the THX Onyx has an ESS ES. 9281 Pro DAC chip built inside. It will run 32-bit 384 via Windows 10 and in terms of microphone it will run up to 24-bit 48. 
So now with that out of the way, let's get on to my own sound quality assessments. So let's kick things off and talk about the sub bass response. And here I felt that the THX Onyx does extend, however, it's not as meaty sounding as some of its competitors. Namely, for example, the Audio Engine D1 has a much more lower end extension, and let's say the iFi XDST has that true bass function that you can enable, and that gives you just a little bit more of a low end extension. And of course, that might not be pleasing to all people, but for those people who are a little bit into bass music or want a little bit more of a bass line, then what you'll find is some of its competitors have a little bit of a better sub bass extension. The same could be said about its mid bass reproduction. Here it's very tight and controlled, there are no issues in this domain, but in terms of your overall volume, in terms of how much quantity you get, it's a little bit subdued in comparison to, again, some of its competitors. Now again, that's not necessarily a bad thing because this kind of gives it a little bit more of a balanced type of sound. Whereas its competitors, so for example the Audio Engine D1 and the iFi XDSD, have a little bit more of a warmer sound signature, and as a result, seem that they've got a little bit more of an emphasis in the mid and sub bass tones. Now on the plus side, this does mean that the overall mid-range on the THX Onyx, at least for its price tag, is actually pretty impressive. The lower mids don't sound as recessed as some of its competitors, and while it can't quite compete with the likes of the iFi Zendak or let's say the Chord Hugo 2, it does a pretty good job at keeping up, again specifically in the lower mid-range. At the upper mids, I feel that it's pretty much equivalent, if anything, very much comparable to some of its more expensive uh, competitors out there, and here the THX Onyx does come out and really does shine. As for the highs, they extend pretty well, there's a slight tail off at the top end, specifically again comparison to some of its more expensive rivals, so the iFi Zendak again and the Chord Go 2, however for a DAC of its price, I think it does probably one of the best jobs in terms of portraying a good high end extension without sounding too sibilant or harsh, no matter the overall volume that you crank it out at. Now the biggest thing for me however was the sound stage. Now while the instrument separation is actually very impressive in the THX Onyx, I do feel that the overall width and depth that you get in terms of the overall sound stage reproduction does sound a tad closed. Now it's almost no surprise given the size of the thing, however when you compare it to the iFi Zen DAC or you compare it to pretty much any of the other DACs that were in question, they all portray a slightly wider and more expansive type of soundstage which does really come into effect when you're doing some critical music listening or let's say for example you're in game. Now, is it night and day differences? No, but you can hear the differences when you're A-B testing like I was doing. So what I'm trying to say over here is that the THX Onyx's soundstage does feel a little bit close and it does hinder the overall sound experience that you get from it and as a result means that this 200 pound DAC might not be that well suited for those people who want a desktop DAC because truthfully if you want a desktop DAC I might suggest the Audio Engine D1 or even let's say the iFi Zen DAC which are at it's around the same-ish price tag if not cheaper and will give you that more expansive soundstage which will ultimately lead to a far greater audio experience no matter the rest of the overall sound reproductions that they have throughout the frequency range. Now in terms of driving capability I had no issues whatsoever running the MUT. You're running sensitive earphones for example like IEMs you're not going to have problems either and if you're going to run let's say headphones such as the Sennheiser HD 800, 600 ohms or let's say the Bear Dynamics then again you're not going to have any problems. The overall scaling, the overall volume that you can get out of this small little thing is absolutely impressive and it's no surprise here that THX have given that AAA 78 certification because it does get up to ridiculously loud, vo loud volumes without having too much distortion or having any distortion whatsoever or significant noise that you can hear in the background. Now very much on this note although not strict speaking when it comes to sound quality I found that the lack of an, a volume knob or like a volume adjustment on the device itself caused me sometimes to have some frightening experiences when having my headphones on because I'd forgotten to adjust the overall volume on my source device and it meant that some music became blaringly loud and 
caught me and made me jump almost, and not exactly great for my hearing either. I wish that THX had integrated this, and when I asked THX about this, they said that some of their competitors don't use volume adjustments, but in my opinion, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't have used it, because it would have been nice to have independent volume controls on the device itself for those people who don't want to be frightened like I was when it came to switching between different source inputs. Now, this really ultimately leads me onto my verdict, and here, I feel that the THX Onyx is a good DAC. It's not like it's a bad DAC at all. However, it's got its use case. In this respect, I feel that it will be very much useful for those people who want an ultra portable DAC, not for those people who are going to be running it on their desktop, for example, or on a laptop, because if you're those type of people, then you might want to consider some of its cheaper or indeed like like for like in terms of price alternatives that will be listed down in the description below, because those will provide a better overall sound reproduction. And as for recording capabilities, some of the DACs don't have the ability to have have any recording capabilities. However, again, you might want to consider other alternatives because, well, the THX Onyx in my test didn't perform well in this domain. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you're someone who is on the go and you don't really care about recording capabilities and don't care about the overall gain, then the THX Onyx will probably be one of the best DACs that you can find on the market. If, however, you're someone who's going to be using it at a desktop and really running it on a well, more permanent basis rather than taking it on the go and placing it in your pocket, for example, then you should consider some of its alternatives. And that is ultimately my verdict. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, give it a like, subscribe and favor and share and all that good stuff as it always helps the channel grow. And of course, let me know in comments below what you make of the THX Onyx or some of its competitors. I've been totally dubbed. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.